Hello again, John Guinan here. Um, we're on to mini lecture number two, talking about urinary system decompression. Uh, better, probably better named as uh, GU access. So, you know, we're talking about treatments for hydronephrosis or any other reason you'd need to get into the urinary collecting systems, comma, ureter or bladder. So catheter options, uh, we're basically going to be talking about percutaneous nephrostomy tubes because I think that's what's by far the most common, uh, but we'll briefly talk about the other ones just so you know that they're out there. So a percutaneous nephrostomy tube is a drainage catheter that we put in through the skin and the actual pigtail portion of the tube stops in the urinary collecting system. So it's adequate to drain um, kidneys uh, that can't drain their normal anatomic route into the bladder. Good for treating hydronephrosis, pyonephrosis, all those things. Other options, uh, percutaneous nephroureteral stent, that's a percutaneous tube that goes in through the skin, into the collecting system, has a loop in the, the renal collecting system, and then goes all the way down into the bladder. So can be used basically for the same things as a percutaneous nephrostomy tube, but has the added benefit that we can cap the external portion and then basically use it as an internal ureteral stent. Uh, you always have that external portion in case the stent internally isn't draining the way we want it to, so it gives us a little flexibility. A lot of times it's used as a precursor to an actual ureteral stent, again, because we have the flexibility of that external portion. Um, the ureteral stent, just as it sounds, it's a tube that goes in, has a pigtail component in the renal collecting system and a pigtail component in the urinary bladder, and it's completely internal. There is no external portion, so in that way, it's convenient for patients. But if they need to be exchanged or if they're not working correctly, it means another, a little more invasive procedure for the patient. And then the last one, and the probably the least frequently used, would be a retrograde nephrostomy tube. That's for people with ileal conduits or urostomies, um, and we can put a tube up from the stoma into the um, kidney. In that way, it's a little more convenient for the patient because it's nothing going out the flanks, nothing through the skin. It's all into the urostomy bag, which they already have anyway. Anyway, we're going to spend most of our time uh, talking about the percutaneous nephrostomy tube. <coughs> so indications, again, any reason you'd need to be in the um, renal collecting system. Again, most recent or most uh, commonly would be people who have obstructive uropathy, whether that's from a stone or an infection. Uh, also, people who need urinary diversion, whether they had a bladder surgery or GU surgery further down the system. Another frequent uh, reason we get asked to do these is for percutaneous access for intervention. So we'll help out our urologist colleagues. Um, they want to do lithotripsy and need to put in some bigger caliber scopes and instruments and they'd like us to get a good access for them so they can easily get their instruments to where they need to go and then occasionally we'll get asked to put um, something in through the kidney and down the ureters so that the surgeons can feel it better and localize it better and minimize risk of having an injury during the intervention um, so kind of our orders of operation, what we're doing, if I get asked to do one of these procedures, I'm going to look at some cross-sectional imaging. I'm going to decide what type of catheter we're using. And then, you know, basically if we're accessing a obstructed system, whether that's in a gallbladder or a kidney, we're going to want to give them some antibiotics because any stagnant fluid has a chance of, you know, having some bugs growing in there. Um, so, you know, during these mini lectures, I'm not really going super detailed into step-by-step -step instructions on how to do these things, um, but one of the important notes of doing this procedure is, you know, the plane that we're trying to access the kidney in is this uh, kind of mythical plane called Brodel's bloodless um, plane, 
Now, we can't really see it by imaging, but it's a posterior lateral axis point, and the point is the way the vascular anatomy of the kidney is set up, basic, we're trying to go through small vessels and not any large vessels, so um, kind of a posterior lateral approach is always appreciated. And again, also if we can hit a calyx basically directly on the head, we're hitting the ends of these arter uh, arterioles, which again decreases the risk of um, causing injury. Um, and I took this little uh, screen grab from a YouTube channel called Anatomy Knowledge. Uh, it's pretty good, so if you want to check it out, that's something you can do. <coughs> so getting finally into our cases here, um, here's an axial image of a CT. Um, this right kidney you can see is, oh, this right kidney you can see has some fluid um, which is obstructed. We're not getting a great slice of the left for comparison, but this is some hydronephrosis. And then also you can see some stranding around the kidney. The kidney looks enlarged, so it's uh, not draining well. Here's another case um, is of a stone former, and this probably jumps out at you right away, this obstructing stone at the uh, <coughs> ureteropelvic junction. And it's a little hard to see, but um, some pretty massive hydronephrosis that I've outlined for us here. So that's a reason to do an intervention. So this is our procedural ultrasound that we use for guidance into our collecting system. And again, not super easy for people who haven't looked at ultrasound, but this area is our hydronephrotic collecting system. And then it's kind of hard to see um, the renal parenchyma just because they're so hydronephrotic. So our choices for access, we want to be in that posterior lateral um, plane, but we can drain the middle calyx, the inferior calyx, superior calyx if you wanted to. Almost always we're looking for middle or inferior. <coughs> and those are kind of the expected um, planes of access that I would take. So in this case, I took the inferior plane and because of that stone, I couldn't get my wire to go all the way down, but I got enough wire access to get in, get the, um, a nephrostomy tube in place. So here's another, <coughs> this is another um, case. Uh, believe it or not, these are not acute findings. So this is another stone former. The other case, uh, patient I just showed you was an acute uh, case, so they needed emergent um decompression. In this case, this patient presented just for access for PCNL. Um, both kidneys needed it. I'm going to focus on the left kidney, actually. So we can see that they probably have a staghorn calculus in here with really no hydronephrosis, uh, which always makes access a little bit more tricky. And this is a blurry image because I've stacked multiple images on top of each other, so we can see the extent of this staghorn calculus. Basically, uh, stones taking up 100% of the collecting system. Um, so this is what that looks like on ultrasound. So we're just seeing the inferior pole of the kidney here in transverse view. And then this echogenic portion is the stones in the collecting system. And you can see that dense shadowing that comes when you're trying to look through calcium or bone or stones or anything like that. So um, we can use those stones as something to aim at because we know they're in the collecting system where we want our access to be. Um, and that's exactly what we did. With ultrasound guidance, we guided our needle right onto that stone and confirmed it with a fluoroscopy. We injected some dye, which showed we're in the collecting system. So then we want to get a wire down, which can be a little tricky when there's lots of stones in there, but with some perseverance, we got our wire into the ureter, and then we eventually got a catheter over. And, um, I think this is one of my favorite images that I've taken uh, in IR just because, I mean, the sp stone burden is crazy and I just think it looks cool. So uh, you see contrast outlining the collecting systems and also it's they're kind of coating all the stone that's sitting in there, which is uh, pretty neat.